So, hi everyone. Next, we have Gabrielle Massoud um, talking about comparative life cycles of internal combustion engines versus electric engines. So, Gabby, you want to take it away? Thank you. Um, hi, as you mentioned, I'm Gabby Massoud. Um, I'm doing comparison, comparative life cycle assessment between two BMWs. I'm doing internal combustion engine, so a standard car, and then a plug-in hybrid electric. Um, so, a life cycle assessment is pretty much a cradle to grave analysis. You take all the raw materials that go into it, the process, the carbon emissions, and then the process that go into making the actual car, and then you go to the actual car's life cycle of how the carbon emissions go, um, how the car is driven, and then you compare it to all the emissions from like disposal. Um, and I'm taking two of the cars and comparing them against each other to see which one is the most environmental, um, most environmentally friendly. Um, and I want to do this for the best, the model for the average BMW customer. So I want to take a, the BMW and see if you can really make it a hybrid without losing any of like the powertrain that BMWs are known for. Um, so this is an important issue to me because it's about climate change and everything. Um, with rising temperatures and like drastic weather patterns caused by greenhouse gases, we want to reduce our carbon um, footprints, and this also includes through cars. Um, studies focus on carbon dioxide because it's one of the biggest greenhouse gases. Um, I kind of did this too for the introduction of the Model 3 through Tesla. Um, they really paved the way for these supercars that were also economically and um, economically and environmentally friendly. But if you want a Tesla right now, you have to be on the waiting list for two to three years. So that's when BMW came out with the same year as the Tesla Model 3. Um, they came out with these different electric cars that you don't need a wait list for. Um, so why I chose BMW is they have a rich history with the automotive industry. Um, they're one of the top selling cars of all time. They started in 1916 as an airplane engineering company, moved to the car industry at the end of World War I. Um, they're also named one of the most sustainable automotive companies in the world, and they've been this way since for 18 years. Dow Jones Sustainability Index um, acknowledges the top 10% most sustainable companies. Uh, BMW has always been the top um, car automotive manufacturer. Um, they also have a line of where these cars come into play. They have a line of iPerformance. It started as the performance line for their concept cars, the i3, which is completely electric, and then the i8, which is a supercar for plug-in um, plug hybrid. Um, it became such a success that they ended up doing um, a lot more lines with that. So now you have hybrid electrics in the 3 Series, 5 Series, 7 Series, and some of their crossovers. Um, and I also just personally like BMWs. I grew up with them. I know how to work on them. Um, and I figured it would be something good to explore. So I'm doing a compar um, comparison between the 330i and the 330e. They're both the classic 3 Series that BMW is known for. Um, the 330i is an internal combustion engine, which most cars are. The 330e is the plug-in hybrid electric, so you can charge it up at home, but you can also charge it up while you're driving. Um, it's pretty much a souped of Prius, if you will. Um, but both cars have the same body style, the same, um, the weight's a little different, but pretty much everything's the same except for the electric motor, and then they also have the same um, engine. So in a comparative life cycle assessment, um, like I said, it's cradle to grave because it really looks at all the impacts that this car has. Um, so there's four stages of this. It's the scope and goal, um, determines the boundaries of the assessment, um, limiting the products and processes. Uh, for this, only the battery and motor um, are going to be analysis, analyzed. Um, everything else is the same. Um, because if you add all the other components, it's really not going to make a difference in the long run of this. And then you have the life cycle inventory. This assesses all the raw materials and processes that go into making the vehicle. Um, the emissions that come out, come out of each process, including the actual use of the car and the disposal at the end of the life or recycling. Then you have the life cycle impact assessment. You take all the knowledge that you got from the inventory. Um, and so you take all the emissions and all those materials and processes and analyze them to see which has the biggest carbon footprint. Um, then you have the interpretation phase, so you take all the information that you figured out and then you kind of determine what to do from there. Um, and you decide which is best. A lot of car manufacturers and just product designers in general, they use these to try and see where they can cut costs, they can cut emissions, um, and it's used in a lot of product lives. So for this, the scope and the goal, 
Um, it sets the boundaries for the assessment. Um, and like I said, I'm only doing the engine and the motor because that's the only thing that's different. If I didn't set such a um, narrow scope and goal, I could be going on forever about this because you can go into the plastic that goes into um, some of like the, le the plastic, the leather, um, the electrics, the rubber, you can go on forever. Um, and then we have the life cycle inventory, so it's all the raw materials. This is the biggest part of the analysis because you have the batteries for both cars. So in the 330E, you have a lithium ion battery. It has three components, the anode that's made out of graphite, electrolyte that's made out of lithium salts, and then the cathode, just a mixture of cobalt, aluminum, and nickel. These are the parts that kind of make, these are the parts that make the 330E the more sustainable option when you drive it but the raw materials that go into these have the biggest environmental impact from what I found. So the anode's made of graphite and it's electrode that's oxidized, where oxidation takes place, producing the positive charge in the battery. Then you have the electrolyte, which is the lithium part, so that's 70% of the battery. Um, it's made of lithium salt and made, um, and moves back and forth between the anode and the cathode. And the cathode is the electrode that reduces, the reduction takes place, the negative charge made of cobalt, aluminum, and um, so the lithium salt, graphite, cobalt, and nickel are all extremely rare. Um, not extremely rare. They, where you have to mine them, it's not environmentally sustainable at all. They're usually third world countries. These company, these countries don't really get the uh, the benefit of the mining, and usually they get the worst, um, the worst of the mix. Um, but then you also have to compare that to lead acid batteries that go into standard cars, which also still go into the 330E to power like. Um, the electronics inside the car. Um, but so lead acid batteries, um, they're traditional in the ICE cars, um, and you have to use it to um, to power everything, including in the uh, standard car, it gives the car that jolt to start up the engine. Um, and lead acid, while it's also not good for the environment, it's more contained in these batteries. It's not as bad when you mine it, it's only bad if the lead gets contaminated elsewhere. Um, and then, so once you get the raw materials, um, you raw materials and refinement, and it goes to the production of the actual car. I, you then take the final product of the cars, and you have to transport it out in the world. Right now, both these cars are made in Germany. Um, the 330i and all other standard 3 series are made in Munich, and then the 330e and the rest of the i performance are made in the Leipzig, um, Leipzig, Germany. Um, from there, they get transported to a port in Bremerhaven, Germany, um, and from there they get on a ship and get transported to Georgia if they're going to be sold on the East Coast. From there, for the purchase of this, I said they're just going to Harrisonburg. Um, and so I took like the carbon impact from going from the plants to the port to the U.S. all the way to Harrisonburg. Um, and after doing all the calculations to figure out the carbon emissions, um, it came out to be that all the carbon emissions to make the 330E uh, were slightly less than the 330I because of the distance between the plants and the initial, um, the, and then the endpoint. Um, I expect it to be a little different because I thought the production of the 330E would be dirtier per se and have more carbon impacts, but it turns out to be the opposite. Um, and then you have the emissions from the car when they're actually in use. This was taken from the EPU website, um, and you can see that you have on the 330E, with the combined hybrid and gasoline, you have 71 miles per gallon equivalent, because it's not really miles per gallon when it's everything, um, but the range is only 350 miles. Meanwhile, when you have the standard 330i, your range is 477, uh, 427 miles, but you're only getting 27 miles per the gallon. So the carbon emissions are going to be worse for the for the standard car, but you can go further. So this really depends. So when I was doing this impact assessment, I wanted to see which car was best for the average consumer. Um, if you're someone who commutes and doesn't have access to charging stations, um, the 330i is going to the 330i is going to be a better choice just because you don't you have you can rely on standard stuff as compared to charging stations on the 330b. Um, and then you have the interpretation. Um, pretty much just assessing everything that's been going on. Um, you can so, like I said, 
while the 330E is dirtier in the beginning because of all of, like the impacts from the raw materials, over its lifespan it's going to be the cleaner option. Um, but then the 330I is going to be clean to begin with, but has more impacts over its life. Um, and so it's kind of hard to tell which one's going to be the better option, but in the end the 330E is going to be the more sustainable option for everything. Um, can be the more sustainable option. Um, yeah. Sorry, questions? So you talked about the impact that each battery has, um, but how long do these like hybrid batteries last compared to the traditional ones? Like, do they need to re be replaced very often? And like, what uh, kind of envir environmental impact is that going to have? So they don't need to replace unless something drastic happens, um, but it should last the entire lifespan of the car. Um, because there isn't many, since there isn't a lot of data on the actual BMW ones, I took some data from like the Prius. It said the average lifespan of the Prius battery is anywhere from 10 to 12 years, depending on how much you drive. So most people get a new car within that time anyways. So it kind of depends on how you drive. If you're commuting all the time and using this car all the time, then it's gonna wear out a little quicker. But if you're really concerned about your driving, then you can make it last just as long as any other car. What is what are the lifespans of the two cars, including people who buy the secondhand car? Um, well, so these are 2017 models, so it's kind of hard to say because they just started making. Well, so for the 330e, it's hard to say because they just started making them in 2016. Um, but I know the Priuses, you can get them to last just as long as a normal car. Um, for the regular 3 Series, I mean, my dad has one from 25 years ago and it still runs great. It depends on the maintenance and how often you drive it, but if you keep up with it, just like any car, it's going to last you a long time. Okay, so if money wasn't an object and you had to pick like one of these cars to buy, why would you, which, one, which one would you buy and why? Um, honestly, I'm kind of sick of BMW, so I get an Audi. But um, right now in my life, I would get the just standard um, 330i because I don't know where I'm going to end up in the next five years. I don't know if I'm going to have charging stations around me. Um, and I don't really know where like, the technology is going to go. But if like, the technology like, kind of stays where it is and in you know, five years I have a house and I can put in like, my charging stations or I have a charging station near me, I would invest in the, the 330i. So go back to his question, oh. um, e even if, if the battery lasts a lifetime of the car, you still have to dispose of it. So how have, have did the disposal of the battery factor into your, your overall assessment? Um, okay, so BMW has a buyback program where you can recycle everything. Um, for the, ion, the lithium ion batteries, they take them and that's one of the dirty parts too about them. They've actually been catching fire in plants um, because of the harmful uh, metals in them. Um, but they take them back and they strip them of everything. They <coughs> try to reuse all the uh, raw materials. Um, but like I said, because it is a newer car, there's not too much data on it. But they try to recycle everything and take it apart as much as they possibly can. Um, same with the 330i. 90% um, of it is recyclable. And so you can take it apart. And this is also at a BMW like factory. They can take it apart and pretty much reuse everything. Um, Stephanie, aside from like looking at the environmental impact, um, for the average consumer, which one makes more sense financially to buy? Like, does the long-term benefit of using the 330e make money over time, despite it probably, I'm guessing, that it costs more? Yeah, it costs like five thousand dollars more initially. Um, I would, yeah, I would say the 330 is a good investment if you're someone who's going to buy it outright and then use it for the life of it. If you're just going to lease it, honestly, I'd go with the 330i. Um, you're not going to get any like tax breaks if there are any, depending on where you live. Um, you have to buy it outright for that. Um, the 330i, you can get cheaper options too. The 330e starts, or the 330e is only available in one, you know, hybrid electric. The 330i you can get with like more premium packages, a little less if you want, so you have more wiggle room. 330i, so it's better for just like the average consumer, I guess. For thinking about the use phase, I, I recently started driving a, a Chevy Volt, and one of the challenges of that is uh, I can have my effective mileage uh, can run as high as well. The display just says 250 plus miles per gallon because it doesn't go higher than that. Right. Or uh, it can be down what I consider low since I also have a Volkswagen diesel 
can be low as 50, 45 to 50 miles per hour, which is pretty low these days. So it depends a, a lot on the mix of driving. So right, if I'm just like how you drive. I have a 30, 35, 40 mile plug-in range before the gas engine kicks in. I think I noticed this has 14. It's, yeah, it's very low. Um, so it's basically the ICE in the fibers when you're running pretty much every time you take the car. Yeah, out. unless you're just like going to target and back, you're gonna be using it. Um, but with the combined uh, electric motor and the engine, you can extend the range. I think it was seven, uh, 72 miles. Um, but yeah, that's why like I want to love the hybrid, but it also it depends on the person. It's really hard to say which is going to be best because if you are commuting and you don't have like that charging station available, then you're going to be better off with just a standard car. Now this hybrid model does that does the uh, is it a series or parallel hybrid? That is, you know, like in, in the Volt when when I run out of battery charge. My gas of the engine kicks in, but it runs at a constant RPM as a generator. I'm still driving with electric power. Not so the, the ICE is running at its optimal RPM. Yeah, so when the battery is low, it kicks off completely until it's charged back up to, I think, 50% through like the expanded heat, and then it'll kick back on. So it depends on how far and like long you drive it, but once it the battery is low, it will just completely shut off. So you're just driving. You're just normal, regular driving. Your normal transmission then. Mm -hmm. Would it, a me mechanic of ordinary cars be able to repair the 330E? Yes, if it wasn't a battery issue. If it's just a standard um, engine issue, yeah, they have the exact same engine. So is it a lot? Is it more expensive because it's harder to get to the engine? I would imagine, I actually don't know. That's so. right. a good question. I didn't think about that. I would think there'd be transaction issues too, yeah. because depending, unless they have, which I doubt, the, the electric motors are directly on the wheels, then they probably have a separate, different transaxle to run either the electric motors to the, to the drive wheels or the gasoline motors to the drive wheels. So if that, is it going to be a separate set of gearing? They'd have to learn how to work on Okay, thank you very much.